a 20 damage nerf at the max rank, and then his ultimate got a nerf in both the AP ratio and the base damage. So it's definitely weaker than it was on 7.11, yes. but people, <laughs> not a lot of people were even playing it on 7.11. There was a window where it was uh, very, very strong, has since been toned down. Kha'Zix class pick there for FlyQuest as Moon will take that. Oh, please do it. This is such a classic counter pick. Oh, yeah. Make I, sure that you just ulti the person. I'm going to wait until it's locked in, and then I will tell you my thoughts on All right. this champion in the hands of TSM's mid laner. There's Zillion, a classic Malzahar counter pick, and I love Jux and Zillion. I do not like Zillion as a champion. I hate way. it. He is so frustrating to play against, but for a, such a defensive, single-minded champion, Bjergsen makes this work so well, and it is a great counter pick. So, I mean, I love the high soaring out the Malzahar, but Bjergsen's like, dude, I got counter picks everywhere. Don't you worry. Yeah. you are playing the game for so long, these guys always whip out kind of unique champions against each other. You can think back to like high playing the Soraka mid or even the Teemo mid. Uh, so Bjergsen, you know, has one up his sleeve as well for the pocket pick of the Malzahar here from high. And it's even really good in this comp, which is kind yeah. of the fun part. I'm, I'm excited for a sped cled running cled. in the back line. <laughs> but I mean, again, lots of pick here for FlyQuest. They've got a lot of tools to do what they've seen so much success on. I mean, I think of, we talk about Lemon Nation really kind of slumping as a player and changing it up, going to Tom Kanchi's second melee support in a row, same champion, of course, but he was playing, you know, all the big carries, Azara, the Karma, those sort of champions. Lemon's early success in spring did come from Malzahar, just having the element, that go button for FlyQuest is such an important part of how they like to play. And now it feels like there's go buttons everywhere. Moon should feel very enabled to jump in and get aggressive. And FlyQuest, if they can find the picks and get an early lead, this is a team that has always been good at snowballing. Yeah, when they pick up those Barons, etc. But right now, TSM looking to close out 2-0. Does FlyQuest want to take us to a game three? <laughs> well, it's a TSM fan with a crying and moving. No need to cry right now. TSM looking real good up one versus FlyQuest. FlyQuest looking to bring it back in. A Get some revenge from uh, many, many years ago. But FlyQuest would love to start picking up a few more wins. And to do so versus TSM feels ever so sweeter for, yeah. Bjerk, uh, for High and Lemon <laughs> and Turtle and Balls. Yeah, I ran out of place. It's okay. <laughs> Not Moon. Not, I mean, you know, I feel pretty good for him, too. I, I think you, overall, we joke, but the confidence of FlyQuest is a big factor in how they play and their success. So some momentum for this team is always so deadly. TSM going to not try and give that away. And if FlyQuest can get things rolling, if Moon's level 2 gank does work this time, perhaps, could see it work a lot better here. As Moon and Sven might even start it off early. Yeah. Could go for an invade here, the Kled versus the Rumble. Yeah, Rumble early now. 10 second cooldown instead of 6 second cooldown on the Q. So you're able to just push, or enemies are able to push him in now, and you can see Haunter just pushed balls all the way back and was able to get a ward on the red buff, or the blue buff there. So it might be a red side start for Moon, who's back now. Yeah, that vision helped out so much for TSM to kind of scout Moon out early, who is a very aggressive jungler. So we'll see if they can get just as much info this time around. Looks like High has been. Getting some work done already. That's two different Malefic Visions casts he's had for a bit of extra damage, but Björk goes back. Biofrost gonna shake off most of that damage, and looks like Sven's gonna start on the red buff once again. Haunts are here to help, mount it up on Skull, and uh, Moon actually on the bottom side as well. So TSM should know, based on the leash from the duo lane, what is happening in this early jungle. Yeah, also knowing that, you know, didn't start on that top side of the map, will be big. Oh, yeah, also, like you said, the counter pick. The bomb actually removes the void shift from Malzahar, so the bomb will do full damage on the ending point. Attaching it just helps out. High's got a rose of void. Moon, oh, another good gang. Insta flash from Bjergsen. He does it again, though. Goes for the invade. And yeah, right there, Svenskaren was looking for the invade. Might jump on a moon here, or he's going to wait for him to do the buff, and then he'll collapse afterwards. So he's just kind of. Kind of waiting. Very patient. So he has multiple options here. He can actually go in here and gank because this is the side that I actually wanted to play to, knowing his jungler was there. Good buff from High. Gets out early, tagged by Sven's Q, but that's going to make sure that buff goes over to Moon. Yeah. Because Sven didn't have top lane priority, and you can see that Balls is shoving Haunter in, they're going for this invade means you get collapsed on 3v2 instead of having a numbers advantage yourself. So it's actually the higher probability play of working from Sven's Garen there to go for the mid have a two-on-one very quickly and go for the gank. Good little trade there by Double. It's actually kind of weaving around that explosive charge. Doing a bit of damage to Turtle. Certainly saw a lot of success for the Tristana lane last time around. And Bifrost, if he can land those hooks, should be able to 
trade fairly effectively. I mean, this is one of the issues with Tom Kenk in general. He's very good when you're moving around the map, but his landing is a little average. Looking for Bjerg. Back in again, Bjerg, no flash. Moon looking for the first blood. Oh, tries to give it over to Heine. The DFT might be enough. Nope. 10 health. Yep. Bjergsen lived that. And you can see mastery from uh, Bjergsen there. Took Fearless. The mastery is uh, Resolve 3 that gives you more armor and MR. Uh, ends up saving him there. The real good mastery of Bjerg. Barely lives. I feel like Moon maybe could have put an auto win, but maybe tried to give it over to Hyatt. Regardless, Bjerg. Both summoners now going to be blown as he TPs back. But let's watch this again. Moon, his aggression actually paying off this time. Well, he gets spotted there too. And High doesn't walk up. He just throws the Malefic Visions. Another auto attack there may have been the difference. After the fact, he didn't want to scare Bjergsen away. He also can't get stunned. That's the thing I missed. He didn't want to converge the bombs together. So Moon actually playing that really smart. Yep. But Bjergsen barely able to get away from that one. Yeah, Moon backing up was huge there because he didn't get the second bomb or the stun. And Lemon ooh, was looking for well, three stacks. All right, FlyQuest coming alive. I like it. Again, Moon just going back to what he knows. I mean, in TSM's mind, it's like, surely he's never going to do it again. Well, surprise, another level two gank goes into a level three gank. And the pressure has been looking good for them. CS looking much better than it was in the last game. Ahead in mid, even in bot, and even in top lane with Moon still efficiently farming. Also, Hi, though, he's going to get stunned up here. Spence going to land that Q, and there's first blood. And after all that attention mid, the double ganks from Moon to get the flash and return gank. He doesn't get a kill, and the first blood goes over to Spence Garen after a single visit. On second visit, actually, he did have that one early. Yep, just a really good setup there. TSM kind of analyzing the situation well, and uh, to tip the balance in favor of them for right now. Spence up to another good early lead. Let's see what he does with his uh, bonus gold. Yep, TP comes in from high. Yeah, he had gotten ganked earlier, and that was where the flash came in. But Spence Garrett walks over a ward, and High doesn't respect it because he has the uh, passive on. But you see here, he walks over. He's, now he's playing to the side that Spence Garrett is on. Slowed, autoed to remove the shield, and then double bomb. As time is oh, Haunted, it's a rebound! Whoa. Not gonna get it! Wall's able to take him down. Moon with a successful gank of his own this time, and that's the answer you want to see from FlyQuest. Yeah, you want to set that top lane up as well, because the, uh, the Kled gets Better than the, the rumble later on, it's not so much that laning phase because he just pushes you in constantly and you don't have wave clear as the Kled. The Q does pass through minions, but it doesn't pass in a way that really does a lot of damage to multiple ones. The width of it isn't very big. So the rumble keeps him under turret and they finally roll gank up to the top side where Balls is and get a kill. Oh, Margaret, she's still in the bot lane, Lemonation. Tags him with a lick, there's a deadly flourish. No more numbs available. Fire plus just uh, a hooking kind. There for women, but Grey Health not needed. A couple of sections returning back to lane with the BF sword, yeah. so not a whole lot happening as we'll watch how this gank unfolded. Yeah, he had already actually dismounted him, snuck into the bush there, jumps out. And then the flash to chase. Yeah, so flash for flash, but the kill does go over. The minions kind of baited Haunter there, wanted a little bit more courage to try and remount instead of. Uh, yeah, it's another auto attack. Good punish there from FlyQuest. Able to get that kill from the top side and really leverage a strong lead for Balls, who I need to tie by right now. Not a whole lot of extra gold spent, but he does have his TP and Haunts up. Burton needs to get back to the lane, I believe. So whenever Balls does go and spend his gold, he's got a, not too much of it just yet. He's got, a, he's got a pretty good base time up with that teleport. Back in mid lane, though. CS still looking good for high, which is nice. But uh, if you're actually with those two Dorans, lots of early landing items, does not want to get aggressed on anymore. And especially now that Mauser has level six, but Zillion's also six, so be careful when trading those ultimates. Yeah, and this is something that I thought would happen. Uh, Doran's Rings got that nerf where you can't stack them anymore. It's a unique passive of the four mana every time you kill a minion. Um, but people buy it still because it has the base mana regen on it. It has 15 HP, and then it also has the fact that it gives you 60 HP on top of it. So I, I feel like this item is mostly for those early defensive stats as well as lane sustain. Whereas some people are saying you could buy Dark Seal here. It might actually be a better buy because he does have a refillable potion. Uh, but it does want that, uh, that second Doran's, which is HP like, over yeah. time is not the same as flat HP, unfortunately. When you're yeah. getting basically one comboed by Malzahar and or Kha'Zix, maybe that's the thought there. This ball's getting to oof. Uh, that's Garrett looking for position. That's Garrett kicks him back. Oh, that's so tough for Rumble. That comes down and ball is going to go down. Though. That's Garrett. No, no. <laughs> Trapped under the turret. He almost got both there. If Haunter didn't drop aggro, that would have been very close. But yeah, he gets the flash from Spence Garen 
and he gets a kill back. So Balls actually ends up in a pretty good spot there. And this Rumble is going to be a menace here because the fact that there's a Zillion in the game and he wants to be able to, you know, ulti a single person that's getting Malzahar ultied or singled out by Kha'Zix or Jin, the Rumble's the one that adds that AoE team fight damage. So that's where you really want to be focusing is FlyQuest. And TSM are trying to shut it down, but they end up just helping it a little bit. Right, a little low on mana as he does get some good damage done onto Bjergsen. and Moon invading because of the pressure there in mid and bot lane. So gonna try and steal away this blue buff. Bjergsen though has plenty of mana himself to work with. So just some wave play was happening as high as cheating over to the right hand side. Not looking for a donate, but Moon does get that successful steal, so just covering there for his jungler. Yeah, also the fact that Svenskeren died on top, you 100% know where he is, in the fountain. So go take that blue buff. They ward up that bottom side jungle to keep their safe. And make sure that the bottom lane of Wild Turtle Elimination are both in a good spot. Whereas that top lane is really where you want to focus your attention. And you can see both junglers I'm heading towards that top side. Yep. Well, I do like both the champions in the mid lane. I did not, I did not promise it was going to be an exciting lane. It's there, just kind of farming back and forth. Certainly, action on the bottom side, though, is Biofrost forced to flash away. Turtle chasing down Warlord's proxy is the ultimate out. Biofrost should be able to keep him safe. It might take a little too much here. Oh boy, last crit, not enough to kill him. Double set of heal as well, so mm -hmm. if they thought there was a huge issue, could likely save him. But Biofrost staying strong. Ball TP oh, for wild Turtle, he's here. Dancing grenade, not quite enough with the flourish. Does tag Biofrost, double it, books it out of the way, but balls. Is he ready? Ultimate just needs to get the snipe. Double if flashes out and balls doesn't oh, get a oh. Buster Frost. He might have even moved him, but Biofrost does go down. Yeah, he throws out the Buster shot and flashes at the same time. And that's really a situation where you have to put the Equalizer down right on top of Double if and hope that you put it the right direction because he flashes as soon as it comes out. Well, it might be a turret still for FlyQuest, so going to get rewarded here for their aggression in the bottom side of the map. First turret goal over to Fly. And a gold lead now developing 10 minutes in. Moon's also going to take away this break. And again, just a place. Execution looking a whole lot better in TSM. Yes, they're also making plays themselves at FlyQuest. Just playing with uh, a little more calculation. The turret trade will come out. TSM able to take top out of. And they're going to shove this. And they don't get the Rift Herald in return. Typically, the trade will be you trade turrets, you trade Drake for Rift Herald. But they don't get that. Gets the heal out. Almost gets double if there, he's so low. And Balls uses the Q there while he's traveling, so he doesn't get to have it walk up on double if. So if he had saved the Q, but he was trying to overheat, I feel like that's a little bit of a, a mechanical misplay there from, from the Rumble. Maybe. Yeah, just walk up and press the Q instead of actually uh, yep. instead double there. Gets away. But our fire press does go down, and so does that turret. So still a trade up there for FlyQuest. That's high shoving mid lane in very aggressively. Kind of working towards the first little item. Ty scoots away ah. from that bomb. While well, Turtle now on the top side of the map with Lemon, so we're gonna get something started on that top outer. And yeah, Bjergsen is respecting the potential all in with High's ultimate, just playing back, bombing the wave, and then walking away. I do have to correct myself from earlier. It looked like High still had the uh, passive on from just the bomb being picked up there. Yeah, so you do have to take it off with, I think, an auto or some such. Yeah, little bomb damage. I think the one true damage might still be there, but I could be wrong. I know it still pulls turret aggro. Yes. It used to be because it did the damage. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it still does that anymore. But uh, still, Bjork has been playing it well. It is tough for Mal to really approach someone that doesn't really need to do anything against a creep wave again. Bjork is throwing bombs, just walking away. A lot of fun there in the mid lane as far as where it goes. Balls and also back to battle. Little bear trap, but uh, we'll walk away from that range. And now could be problems. Stun lands in, spends here. Bjergsen, he early ulties to just get aggressive. And Lemonade here. coming back around. Lantern able to be taken. Biofrost there to save his mid laner. Aggressive play from TSM. Yeah, and High didn't use the ultimate there either to lock down Bjergsen. Saw that the ultimate was on and didn't want to have to root himself. So they get out, and now they get to push in mid. It's a TP, so yeah, they get the answer. Bjergsen forced to use that to save the wave. And Moon's actually been quite active this game, and it hasn't been blowing up in his face like last game, because made some early plays that could have paid off for the team and put them pretty far ahead, but now on this Kha'Zix, he's gone for some risks, and these ones have paid off for the most part. Ben's gonna take it, yeah, but it's isolated. Hold on, though. Oh, uh, yeah, kicks him out. Deadly Flourish does not connect as TSM TV, and they're trying to catch him something as high. Gonna be the next target. Haunter looking to use the ultimate down, but it's not quite aimed in the right direction. 
Everyone else speeding up though, and there's the flash in Rahonto. One high, gonna try and take him down high. Eating damage, great double stun there for the Zillion Turtle. It's gonna fall as well. And the beautiful double bomb from Bjergsen, the flash forward to get that down. Really good play from TSM. Looked like everything was gonna go wrong when Haunted couldn't quite get the angle on the ulti and Spin almost got soloed. Instead, TSM come up with the play and the top tower also went down by the looks of things, although no, not yet. I can't see that's one they took earlier, excuse me. And now Rift Tower are gonna go over and try and find themselves a second tower. Yeah. I would assume they try to use this on the mid lane turret to burst that open. It is kind of difficult to get in on a Malzahar and not have it turn around because it's he has a lot of potential to lock somebody up and make sure that they have to stay there and wait as they're sieging. But yeah, double lift avoids the teleport here, but it's high coming through, and he doesn't really have enough setup time. It looked like he wanted to just double Voidling there, throw the E, and then use ulti, but then the other teleport came through, and high does stick around a little bit too long here. And Turtle setting up traps trying to peel for him, and then they walk too close together, and it's the double bomb there that gets the stun on the float. And it looked like that bomb was about to land on minions, but it just sticks to high, and then the next one follows up, and it gets Wild Turtle in there, too. Really nice setup there, again, for TSM. You can see how all the elements are coming together. I mean, Biofrost and Bjergsen sped into that team fight yeah, in the Kled slipstream. Yep, uh, he said the sped Kled. Uh, now they're trying to gank the Kled. Oh, no. Make a dead Kled. <laughs> we'll see. Was it just out of the way? Back through balls. Moon's here, though, and now this not incoming. Bear Trap pulls Moon a little bit up, but not far enough. Spend though, can save it. Great kick through. Falls it out. Takes down Moon. And now the remount falls. Oh, no. It's all troublesome. as high. Even going to get Ty Bjergsen this here a little too quickly. Dismount again. High trying to get the kill, but Spend shuts that down. And the ulti from Bjergsen resurrects Haunter, so he doesn't die either. And now Sven, looking for the Q, lands it, falls it through, shield, that's great, that's grab shield buff! Might save oh. falls, but Sven just gonna trade. At least gets him a counter kill there, you're right, the scrap shield buff. Shout out to Freak. <laughs> he told me to get that one in a call if I can manage it, so there we go. <laughs> yeah, it's a little stronger, but it's a 0.5 second less duration. I mean, it's great in moments like that. Yeah. Just need to live for a split second longer. DSM though starting to take hold of this game, it does feel like. Still even as far as the objective front goes, been a lot of trades back and forth, but Rift Herald's still there for Sven. He's dead right now, so not gonna get much use out of it until he's back up, but watch this exchange, as this was so well played around the club. Yeah, ends up getting dismounted here, but the team is ready to reinforce. Sven Skarin comes in, kick, and goes for the flash to follow up and finish off Moon, and it knocked through balls, so didn't get the perfect equalizer that he wanted either. High dismounts, and then the ulti comes in from Bjergsen, and high dies too. And yeah, the scrap shield buff, it's level one right now for Ball still. The change was, it went from two seconds to 1.5 seconds, but it went from 50 to 80. Oh no, and another 1v2 situation, but Haunter might win it on his own. No, not enough. Shut down by Moon. Elimination even there for backup. Man, they put so many resources top from FlyQuest. And you can see Ball's got those early kills for himself, was three and one, now he's four and two, but Monster was the one who was kind of shut down earlier. Well, this turret's gonna fall down. TSM might even channel the Rift Herald in mid. We're gonna get some damage down while Turtle gets out of the way of the bombs. And one of the nations there to make sure he's okay. So Rift Herald still ticking down. Does not last forever, so you need to use the trinket if possible. But TSM again just trying to continue threatening all the positions on the map. And this Drake will be theirs also. Now equalizing on Cloud Drake. And Turtle breaks here. A lot of action here in this game, and FlyQuest fighting back a lot better. Balls kind of has been the big recipient of a lot of this early game. He's 4-2-0. and oh. Yeah, and he's you know, done pretty well in this game for himself, but the Kled will eventually kind of counter him in the split push. Uh, we'll be able to buy these big ticket items where he has lifesteal, where he has a lot of HP and durability. So it's very difficult for him to kill the Kled, and the Kled kind of wins that matchup, like I said. But the thing I want to focus on here is the mid lane. High, down, in. CS down in gold, and the Zillion really got the better of him. And I feel like Bjergsen off of the roll and off of the plays that he was able to make was really kind of, you know, the recipient of Sven Skarin's attention. So that's what they traded for that top lane early, but Hansa was able to recover. So Bjergsen's in a good spot up against High, who you know, can't really get these picks online. He's looking for a split push into trying to get a pick, but it hasn't worked out just yet. They aren't controlling vision well enough, and TSM are 
grouped and and roaming around, so they're respecting the Malzahar. Yeah, good response though from FlyQuest moving towards the top side to save high as Biofrost was looking to start off that roam. Bjergsen going back, actually going to spend some money as the Rift Herald did manage to finish off the mid lane turret. So 3 1 up now in turrets for TSM. They're up about 2,000 gold and change. And Hornster, like you said, happy to sit down on the bottom side, come when he's needed into these team fights, and yeah, Jackson should be able to wave clear for a while as high. It's so unsafe for him to try and farm farm, but he really needs to keep up in minions. Abyssal Voyage got canceled. You can see it's on a very short cooldown there, and like two seconds left. Yep, oh, it looked like they tried to go for something, and he just said no. Good threat in there by Lemon. I think forced TSM to back up as there's no one there. Looks like Bjergsen was recalling. <laughs> Doesn't manage to complete it. <laughs> I just had flashbacks to the, the time that Observers followed the Caitlyn ulti into the base. I'm like, <laughs> if, we're, if we're following the, the Jin Deadly Flourish, we're going to get some whiplash. That is, that's a fast ability. <laughs> well, Follow every Jin bullet. <laughs> All four. Get the, uh, get the sweet camera angles going. Follow yeah. behind them. Yeah, we can make it work. Certainly a challenge. Just Bjergsen. Murillo on the way. Just again stacking all that mana. No tier for Killian this time around. I feel like that feels going out of style. Yeah, it takes a really long time to scale up, and it's kind of aided by the fact that now Murillo Namicon is such a good item. Look at this. Look for Biofrost. Does have to flash there, or else he would have gotten uh, locked up by High. And High has to, before the Malzahar, just ulties. You have to pop WE and then a ulti. So there is like that small window where he has to kind of rule his face over the keyboard. So you get him as he's starting the combo. It's actually really nice from Bio. I think he just saw his cost animation. He's like, I'm out. Get me out of here. Yep, I don't want to do have anything to do with this. As Ball's going to be a target. Good slowdown from Bjergsen. Hornsa crashes into him with the ultimate. But here's Lemon going to try and save the day. Last bomb should be enough. Hornsa looking to finish it off and does take him down. Lemon can't devour in time as Biofrost hooks onto Turtle. Play back into the double bomb. Stun. Turtle ignited. Goes down to Hornsa. is still fighting, trying to remount. But Bjergsen. Chasing it onto Lemon. Sven here first. Once again, is TSM just all over the map. That's a triple kill for Hornsa. I mean, he got shut down early, but it doesn't matter. He's online. TSM helped him out a whole bunch with that bottom lane play. Just an incredible amount of synergy with all those players. And meanwhile, Double is just soloing in the mid lane, almost trying to take that turret high. Does get a trade in the process for FlyQuest. You get so uh, much. Not much of a trade here as TSM going break to break open the bottom half. Yeah, they just got two turrets on the bottom side. Mid turret is super low, and Double will be able to get this with those auto attacks. Already used the E, but it's only a few more away. So yeah, that's a huge power play to pick up three turrets for TSM, and now up 5,000 gold as Infernal Drake will be up shortly. Ulti from Hobster gets him in there, and I like how Bjergsen does that with the Q, W, waits a bit, use again, gets the triple bomb in there at the very end. And then Biofrost, <laughs> like, I have you downloaded. I laned with you all last split, Wild Turtle. Reads him there. Wild Turtle still has flash up in that, in that moment. But doesn't see the play coming. Yeah, and TSM continues the play. Dive on and take pretty much the maximum out of that all with High stranded in top lane, trying to push down a turret. Double was also not present, but was not needed. Took down mid instead, and now he himself has finished that static shift. So Tristana will really power farm to this next item. And that's one of the nice things about this champion. Yes, like a lot of these three item carries, she'll take a dip in that mid game, but should be there pretty quickly. Yeah, and she doesn't have that much of a you know, power trough in the early parts of the game where she's at one item right now, so. The fact that she can knock down turrets very quickly helps accelerate the pace of the game for her. And I feel like TSM as a whole, you know, we talked about at the beginning of the split, you know, bringing Double Lift back in, what does that look like for this team? Are there too many cooks in the kitchen with the shot calling? And there, like you said, they got the maximum out of that play. The, tr the three turrets, they opened up the bottom side and got the three kills as well. Um, and that just seems like a very clean macro punish from TSM with the comp they have. So having Concert rush in just seemed like the right play and they were able to pull it off. So. It makes you hopeful for TSM moving forward. Like, what does this team look like when they get those punishes? Because so far, it's been looking good against FlyQuest. And again, that kind of Trinity Force for TSM, Hansa, Sven, and Bjergsen all firing together, kind of like they had to in spring when Double, if you know, wasn't on the team. Glimpses are back here in this game, and you know, if everyone can kind of get back to form, if Double, if and Bio can get back to that leaning dominance they had in summer. Yeah, TSM, TSM are going to look like the team that. Smash North America. Yeah, I mean, this was the roster that did go 17-1 and one, and then had that run that got them to the world. So 
TSM now. It's that same roster, but like you said, they're still focusing on that top half of the map, not really paying too much attention to double its lane early. They have a solo lane focus, which is kind of left over from spring. So that's how they play very heavily to that top side of the map. Well, we have to still talk about FlyQuest. Still in this game, most certainly. I mean, 5,000 gold or so is a tough at this stage, but Colonel Drake is going to go over to TSM Fly, wanting to contest, but no steal there from the W. Haunts are actually picking up credit for that one. Yeah, they didn't have their jungler, and they, that actually could have been a deadly flourish steal, but look at that. that oh, oh, ultimate down. And Karen just blows up high. So much damage on the kick, and now Lemon is going to get aggressive on my Haunter. Haunter rolls through, just on the balls, gets the bear trap down, but balls flashes out of the range. Yeah, and this composition with pretty much no big frontline tank here just gets melted when the Kled ulties and then the Zillion speedups come through. It's so hard to peel, and that's how you're supposed to play with no tank is peel kite back. You can't really do that against this TSM composition, and they are playing it perfectly. Yeah, really cool stuff here for TSM. They're looking to get onto the Baron. Moon is still up. He's actually stealth around the other side, but Fight's going to stop. Bold went in a little early, perhaps good ulti, but the Zonis might save him for a little bit longer. Biofrost fighting down for oh, the one. Two. Biofrost gets an order. Double up. He's going to take. Takes down Wild Turtle, bust the shots into death, and Moon, he is trying very, very hard to save this game. Of oh, 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 oh. Bombs onto himself, Moon leaps in just to his death, Haunter takes him down, the ace effectively is completed, and TSM take the Baron as well. A stylish play there from Bjergsen on the Zillion, throws the bomb on the ground, picks it up, flashes after he casts the bomb, that was so well done. And there, that was well done as well. Biofrost getting the hook. It was buffered on the cast time during the uh, Nether Grasp of High. So the Malzahar ulti came out, but the hook still connected and instantly interrupted it. And the only sad thing, maybe, for Bjergsen Zillion in this game, he's got 11 assists, and that's it. And he just bought Majai's. Oh. <laughs> Playing support. Imagine mode. if he had that instead of the second Doran's ring early. To look like a genius. <laughs> Instead, he'll be just fine with where he's sitting by the looks of things as Double If escorts the Baron up minions in towards that midsection. Haunts up. He's gonna do the same in bottom, which still has that exposed inhibitor. And Double If even delaying that rapid fire cannon for a little bit just to make sure he stays safe for the QSS. So TSM is gonna carve through FlyQuest's left side of the map here, and Direction's gonna get things rolling here in the top lane tier two. And now a lot of those options are kind of shut off. If you want to go ulti double lift, you got the QSS, you got to go ulti Haunter, you got the dismount. All right, one life down. Haunter trying to book it out of the way. Needs to get to Bergson. Bergson moves in. Chrono Shift is there. Able to save his life there. The Lantern Haunter says, see you later. Oh, he gets him out of the range, and too. And TSM is still sieging, by the way. So Hulk, he's going to land a hit. Turtle, actually. And Biofrost sets up the box in Lemonade and goes down to spin. Double lift sweeping on. And on a rampage, takes the next one down. And Bjergsen finally going to join the fray. Start not going to connect with Spence. Able to tower dive through a double kill there for a double lift. As it's just chaos under these Taurus balls. Grabs a shot down. The tray kills are happening everywhere else. Double lift did actually die. And Biofrost is close. But TSM. Enough people to clean up the rest of this base. Yeah, look at how low they are. That was such a close fight. They went really aggressive, and they have such a gold lead that that might have been something that could have blown up in their faces. That's the sign of a team that is 12,000 gold ahead and counting. TSM take down the top inhib. They'll take down the inhib turret in mid lane, and they're staying with Haunted dismounted. Lantern's out, needs a little bit more. Haunted, oh, oh another, another ulti. Ulti. But now Bjergsen's going to pay for it. I don't know how. No, he did die. Uh-oh. Didn't quite live in haunts. He's like, okay, okay. Yeah. I gotta go. He's super slow, though. Uh, <laughs> yep, needs a little bit more courage. He can't. Doesn't have his mount. I mean, he's got a Cloud Drake, but... He has to fight. Freak. It's not oh, that right now. Oh, wait. Through. I don't know if he can get through that wall. Levination, they're still chasing got down in Levination. Rico, 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 Rico. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Rematch, no, not quite. <laughs> Shut down by Moon. <laughs> As Pastry almost falls out of his chair. <laughs> almost there. But yeah, the kick flash there from Spence Gary to get Levination into the team, and Biofrost with the hook onto Wild Turtle. Like I said, he's got his old teammate downloaded. Double lift goes up, gets the crit in his face, and then is able to flash away, but then uses the jump to go forward. Dies on the back end, and then right here, Spence Gary, when he goes after Balls, he actually blows up to get the kill there. So Balls actually gets a double as he comes out, but that was very close to going in favor of FlyQuest. Well, Bjergsen finally got a kill, but it cost him a death. Crumples down. Uh, I think it was still okay with the scoreline as TSM 
monumentally far ahead despite some hiccups in the base. Two inhibs down. TSM not even going to bother with the Cloud Drake. It's up in a minute and 10 seconds time, and that is far too much to be worried, worried with right now. Instead, they'll take the three item double lift, the three item possum advised Bjergsen, and uh, the rest of their very large carries, plus team down to the last remaining inhibitor. Yeah, I feel like that last fight was baited by the crowd. They started chanting TSM. And TSM was like, we, we got to listen to him, guys. We got to go. Got to go in. Got to make sure that we make a big play. Like I said, sometimes you can afford to be playing recklessly when you're very far ahead. Double yeah. lift even carrying the bombs in towards the team. Yeah. They're actually just constantly speeding him up, and double lift's gonna start taking plus shots. So simply means they're gonna start causing problems, and there's a root for double lift. Who's live with the ultimate down? Just gonna hop out of the way. Jerkson holding onto his cooldown. The monster kind of rearing off the front line. Moon, though, taking some chunks. Double lift's finally ulted up, but he doesn't actually go down. Good yeah. stance there. Great locket, though. Gonna get some extra hands. Oh, oh, excellent bomb. Stopping there on to spend by high. Just stunned him, didn't have the passive. Yeah. Cancels the channel and now TSM for the super minions finally in the mid lane. They have to care about all these minions trickling in. And even more, double attacked again. Sped up by Bjergsen, so I'm gonna shield him. Turret not quite dead, double if maybe charging up that energy. We're gonna get that one last little rapid fire cannon hit on top, but TSM happy to play patient. Fly eventually have to answer these super minions. And there's a TP in, Haunts up. He's gonna come back with full health, maybe even a buy. Double lift fighting Lemon. Lemon pretty tanky though. Double lift still again, cutting back and forth. Haunted just dives in for it. Here's some actually just starting a fight, kick back in, high goes down. And now the turrets are exposed. Not a whole lot left for Fly to defend as TSM on a rampage recklessly through FlyQuest turrets. And double lift's just focusing that turret down. They're trying to go for the 2-0 here. All right, just mounted Hunter again. Looks to fight courage. That's run out. And he'll fall down as total snipes him. But revived their own defense. He's just going to tank it up. The next is exposed. And TSM are going to sweep him. Black West go down. And TSM looking better and better as the weeks go on. And now TSM are tied for third place with CLG and are now in the top three. Now remember, they beat Counter Logic Gaming, so they actually are technically in third place. The TSM, that slow start. They've only lost to the two teams now above them in the standings. Starting to get a little bit of that feel back where, oh, this is natural, the MSI kind of hangover, and also the fact that they brought on Doublelift and are readjusting to having him in the roster. Seems like a lot of those worries against especially the bottom teams are irrelevant. This is an hour of game time between the two games at 30 minutes and then 29 minutes in this next one. So TSM are looking better and better as the weeks go on. Whereas FlyQuest, they're still trying to find that group. Yep, old friends will shake hands and exchange hugs. Smiles all around on the TSM side, especially as they'll go and greet the fans who are, should be very happy to see that they are ascending. Now, I think the caveat there has to be that, yes, they've lost against the, the good teams, although did beat CLG, which was impressive, given how strong CLG have looked, despite maybe a recent slight dip in performance. But certainly winning where maybe they're expected to. And I think TSM have to think, we've shook off those early weeks. Things are looking up. and. As they play through that first half, we'll see what their record looks like and then how they get tested again when they replay the teams, when the standings are a little more solidified. That will really tell us a lot about this team. On the FlyQuest side, I'm happy with these games for them. I mean, they won't be, of course. You never want to take an 2 sweep, but that second game especially, things were set up a lot better. I think TSM just showing a little bit more class today. Yeah, it's a lot of decisiveness. Once they control the center part of the map because it was falling, uh, and High was getting behind, they were able to rotate and like catch people out with three or four people, go for the bottom lane, die with a numbers advantage. And like that's what I really think uh, kind of crushed this game was the fact that the mid lane wasn't able to hold up, where they threw two ganks at it from uh, FlyQuest side, they got the flash, didn't get the kill. Then there were two ganks thrown back at it, and they got the kill, and they started pressuring it down. They got the Rift Herald and started using it on mid lane and were able to pick that up. So I feel like that was uh, kind of what unlocked the game here for TSM was being able to just go around the map and not have to worry so much about that middle lane because it was one that was kind of moot. Yeah, and it's hard as well because at some point in this game, like FlyQuest kind of take all their combo picks and say, we're going to try and win early and snowball from there. But at some point when TSM keep the game even or even find advantages, at some point you're just going to suffer a loss from draft at that point. I mean, you said it, like you can't stop this Kled running into your team of five squishies or four and a Tom Kench. And at that point, when you can't get the kill it out of your backline, everyone's gonna die. <laughs> yeah, and then the Zillion bombs. Like, I think Bjergsen played the Zillion very well this game with the counter pick up against the Malzahar. 
that last pick there, kind of the pocket for him, and it worked out. Now he's 9-1 and one all-time NALCS career with uh, Zillion. Excellent on that champion, as expected. But for more on that TSM win, let's send it over to Captain Flowers and the victorious mid laner. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I'm here with Bjergsen after the TSM victory over FlyQuest. Now, Bjergsen, I know you guys got to be feeling good. Talk to me a little bit about your specific matchup this game against High. We know that this is an age-old matchup. You guys have met on the Rift tons of times before. What was it like this time around? Uh, I felt I felt it was very jungle influenced in both games. I got ganked at level two. Moon just did red buff and then ganked me right away. So. It was uh, very different from the games that I usually play because it's kind of like a high-risk jungle path, but uh, I think Moon pulled off pretty well. And I played both games being a little bit behind from the get-go, but other than that, it was just pretty boring lane matchups. I mean, we were just farming. There was no real like killing or anything, so it was mostly just about team fights and everything else outside lane. Speaking about things being a little different than normal and talking about the team as a whole, I want to bring up the fact that you guys, you know, you got your win here. Things are looking upwards, but TSM still not sitting in that first place spot after being the reigning spring split champions. How do you guys feel right now about where the team is and where the team's headed after almost being halfway through summer split? Um, I think it's it's kind of natural and expected. A lot of people expected us to drop off a little bit after MSI because we didn't have the same amount of practice as other teams going into the split. But I think we're picking it up pretty fast. I think the last couple of opponents that we played haven't been the top teams in NA, so we're still yet to prove ourselves against, like, IMT, CLG, and having convincing matches against them. So looking forward, it's all about Rift Rivals and beating the other best teams in NA. Speaking of those other best teams in NA, it's actually two of those best teams that TSM's losses have been against so far, Dignitas and Immortals. So stepping away from the TSM lens directly for just a second, the Dignitas Immortals matchup is happening later this weekend. Who do you think is going to prevail in that one? Oh, man. Uh, I think both teams have really... Uh, Strong strengths. I think actually Dignitas is really, really good at playing against Baron, contrary to what memes have been in the past. Uh, they're really good at just being willing to rush that objective, but IMT has looked really clean. So I'm probably still going to give it to IMT, but it should be a fun matchup to watch. Definitely should be a good one. And one last question for you guys. This split, there is a lot of teams in the conversations for a lot of fans and a lot of analysts that could be vying for that number one position at the end of summer. People are talking about CLG, Dignitas, Immortals, Cloud9, and of course TSM. Of those teams, are there any that are particularly on your radar that you're really looking out for? Oh, man, I think it's a bit early to tell. I think Immortals has been the team that's looked like they've improved the most since last split. They, they look like a pretty average team last split, but with the addition of Xmithy and their new coach, they really look like a top team. So I think having solid infrastructure and coaching staff is what's going to make a team good in playoffs, not just in the regular season. So probably Immortals. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, from Bjergsen, TSM's mid laner. One more time for him and the victorious TSM after their win over FlyQuest. We're going to go ahead and send things over to the analyst desk now. Take it away, boys. Thank you very much, Captain Flowers, Bjergsen, and the rest of TSM. Got the 2-0 victory over FlyQuest. High in the mid lane in this matchup. I mean, it was talked about coming up to it, and High himself, he even said, you know, there was a point in time when I was the dominant mid laner between the two of us. Uh, but funnily enough, we end up with a Zillion Malzahar matchup of all things. Not what you would have guessed. Uh, between these two mid laners. I did not expect that coming into the weekend. But uh, TSM gets the victory here in game two in what to me felt like a very FlyQuest style game. And I think you can kind of look at the team comp maybe out of TSM for a reason. Uh, every single champion here is pretty happy in a skirmish, very scrappy game. Obviously, Kled being able to get remounts, Tristana getting resets, Thresh not being very ultimate dependent, Lee Sin's a very scrappy jungler, and then Zillion is just happy to revive people, and as long as you're not chain CCing and stopping him from being able to do that, like, right. he's a very comfortable champion in a skirmish situation as well. So I think, you know, FlyQuest has this ability to kind of drag you into their style. Talking about these really, really early ganks, you heard Bjergsen say, oh, I got level two gank, two games in a row. Yeah, like Between the two junglers, there were five ganks to the mid lane within the first five minutes of the game. Yeah, so th that's kind of how you get pulled into the style, but this time around TSM having a comp that's like, great, we will win if we keep playing fights every minute. And, and they were able to get a massive lead off the back of just constant team fighting. And to a degree, I think it speaks to what uh, TSM's been vocal about throughout this split in terms of, you know, broadening, broadening their strategic playbook and saying like, okay, we're not only going to play through Bjergsen, we're trying to find our way back to being a multi-threat team that can perform on the international stage. And this is one way of getting there. Putting Bjergsen on a comfort pick, yes, we've seen him on Zillion a million times, but something that's a little bit more supportive and needs to sit behind others who carry. And I think the way that uh, Sven played this game kind of 
goes to that where there's a lot of early attention out of FlyQuest onto Bjergsen, and Sven answered that where he traded the summoner back once uh, Bjergsen had a slash blown early. They repeat ganked him, almost died. Then uh, Sven comes and they get a kill. So he, he was answering that pressure, and then as soon as the mid lane stabilized a little bit more, he started going top over right. and over and over again to get that Kled pick going. So he didn't, it didn't feel like he wanted to play around mid lane, kind of got his hand forced to it, and then once he could get out of mid lane, start playing around top side. But as was mentioned, there was tons of action in this game, fights left and right. Mm -hmm. The one that we want to take a look at comes 1945 into the game. A beautiful collapse from TSM into the bot lane, picks up three kills and multiple turrets across the map. That's the big thing is it feels like when FlyQuest has something go wrong for them, it goes really, really wrong. So, okay, your top lane has been getting picked on over and over. You try and teleport down with the Tom Kent to answer it. Biofrost already roaming down. Good answer by TSM, able to get this collapse and they get a triple kill here uh, with, you know, Sven Skarin coming at the very end. But you see high, not even on the turret yet, decide to stick up there and trade. And it's something that he's renowned for, always wanting to trade. And that's why it used to be so hard to play against C9 because right. they would trade out objectives nonstop. But when you're constantly losing fights and skirmishes pretty heavily, it's, it's hard to trade effectively. So they kept giving up way too many turrets. They get one in the top lane, but they lose two in the bot lane, including an inhibitor turret. And then they lose a mid lane turret as well. So it's just not good trades. And that's why once something goes wrong for FlyQuest, it goes wrong fast. Yeah, again, right there at that 20 minute mark, you can see a jump of about 3K in the gold lead for TSM, where it was previously only about one and a half to two K. Yeah, it might be hard to tell how big of a jump that is because the gold graph goes <laughs> all the way down to 13 Right, exactly, yeah, perspective. It's, it's <laughs> worth noting that is a 3,000 gold play swing right there from that 90 minute skirmish. Yeah, so a very a very smart adjustment by TSM, you know, in terms of playing to that uh, that speed, right? The rate at which FlyQuest had kind of enticed them to mm -hmm. play, TSM matches that aggression and actually finds a way to out-rotate and, you know, kind of, you know, give FlyQuest a taste of their own medicine. Bjergsen going to pick up player a game this time around. On that supportive champion, I mean, we saw even some of his bombs, the, the zillion mechanics to throw a bomb and flash his own bomb into it for the stun buys them a lot of real estate. Yeah, really cute play out of Bjergsen with the uh, zillion pick. Something that TSM has had really good success on and sometimes struggled really badly. If you look back at their spring split last Last year when they were playing the zillion comps, it was not looking too good. So nice to see that, you know, they've, they've found out how to use it this early on in the split where it has not really been meta. Right. A step up here for TSM in terms of, you know, returning to form. Again, we have to remember they are sitting at five and two. They're now tied with CLG after their loss to Immortals last night. They're currently playing Envy at the moment over on the other stream, NALCS2. Uh, but I want to talk about FlyQuest because they're sitting at one and six. And this is a team that, once again, if we track their entire journey, the expectation was that this team wasn't going to do well in spring. They surprised to some degree through the first half, take a small dip, and that slide seems to continue here in summer and, uh, you know, middle of the week here at one and six. A lot of people last split were waiting for them to turn back into a pumpkin, and it almost happened. And then they just barely eked out a couple, like, tense, tense playoff victories and looked reasonable at the end. But it feels like they haven't gone back into that kind of Cinderella form where it's like, oh, it's all the team back together. It's old C9 kind of. And right. they're really running wild with these crazy picks. It just feels like they never found their footing this split, and they're continuing that kind of downward trend that we saw towards the end of the regular season. Is it, an, is it a player skill thing? I mean, are they just outclassed now individually? I think that's kind of the case. You look at one of their losses last week when they were down, you know, collectively 80 CS at something like 10 minutes. This time around also never really having CS leads. Uh, I know some of the matchups are kind of tough based off how the draft is going, but it does feel like it's time for a change in some regard because things aren't going to get any easier as teams start to figure things out. You have Immortals, Dig, TSM, CLG, four really, really competent teams. And if you're hoping to make Worlds, you know, just because you're in fourth last split, it doesn't feel like that's going to pan out this time around. All right. Well, we'll see if they decide to make any changes. That's going to wrap up our first series. We've got more league action coming.